Flow Design has several tools for displaying results. In this video, we'll explore how to visualize results using planes. We'll also discuss what the results mean and how to interpret them. As we go through this video, please follow along in Flow Design. Feel free to pause the video at any time to practice the skill we're discussing. To start, click the Flow Design icon from your desktop. Select one of the sample models. To move the plane, click and hold the drag handle and drag it to a new position. Go ahead and try it. For 2D simulations, the plane defines the location of the simulation. When you move the plane, the simulation starts over. 3D simulations include the entire wind tunnel, so when you move the plane, the results view updates, but the simulation continues running. To change the orientation of the plane, select one of the predefined orientations from the ribbon. The side view aligns the plane with the right face of the view cube. The front view aligns the plane with the front face of the view cube. And the top view aligns the plane with the top face of the view cube. Go ahead and try it. Vectors show the direction of the airflow. Here's a helpful hint. To see vectors more clearly, select the dark background from the toolbar. Go ahead and display vectors and zoom in to view the flow downstream of the model. When you're done, switch back to shaded. You can control the appearance of the plane with the color scheme tool in the toolbar. There are several color schemes to choose from, as well as toggles for the display of banding and contours. Go ahead and click through the different options for controlling the appearance of the plane. But what do the results actually mean about our design? In the region upstream of the model, you'll see that the flow is uniform and the color matches your defined flow speed. The point where the flow hits the model is called the impingement point and is where the flow comes to a stop. High pressures usually occur here. If you're concerned about wind loading, you should display pressure. If you're running a 3D simulation, you can display surface pressure for an even better understanding of the wind loading. As the flow passes around and over the model, it often accelerates because it's constricted by the walls of the wind tunnel. If the wind tunnel is too small, the flow here can get too fast and affect the accuracy of your results. The region just downstream of the model is called the wake. This is where the flow comes back together. The flow in the wake can be pretty chaotic. To get a better view of the flow, show vectors. Another way to view the wake is to display pressure. The pressure in the wake is usually pretty low, and a large wake area can significantly affect how well an object moves through the air. This wake often acts as a resistance and can reduce fuel efficiency in cars and other forms of transportation. You'll often see bands of low speed flow oscillating downstream of the model. This is called vortex shedding and is common in aerodynamic applications. Vortex shedding can cause noise issues and can often affect how the flow interacts with objects downstream. A good way to reduce wind resistance and noise is to design the model to minimize the size of the wake. 